So hi guys, this is Chandan and I welcome all of you to the first lecture of this course and I hope you all are doing well. So these are the topics that we are going to discuss in this video. So as you can see on the screen. So let's get started. So as you can see, the very first question is what is programming? So programming is a way or you can say programming is a technique to instruct the computer to perform some operations and produce the result or to get done some tasks. Okay, as you can see here or to get done some tasks. Now let's try to understand in simple way. Let's say I have two numbers. Let me write it down here. The first number is A and it has the value 10 and the second number is B and it has the value 20. Okay. Now I want to know what will be the value if I adding these two numbers. So what I'll do, I'll say computer, hey computer, add these two numbers and show the result and computer will add these two numbers and will show the result and what will be the result? The result will be 30. So instructing the computer to perform such type of operations is known as programming. Computer not only perform this type of operation, computer also performs a complex operations. Okay. So the way in which we instruct the computer is known as programming. Okay. Because computer not human and we can't directly communicate with computer. Computer not understand our language that we are used to communicate with each other in real life. Okay. So we can't directly in instruct the computer. So there is a set of rules to instruct the computer to write the instructions for the computer known as programming. I hope you are getting my point. Okay. Now let's move to the next topic. Now the next question is what is programming language? Okay. As you can see here. So programming language is a system of notation for writing instructions or set of instructions known as computer program to tell or instruct the computer to do something. Now let's try to understand what is programming language with real world scenario. Suppose uh, there is a person A okay, and there is another person B. And A wants to ask something to B. Suppose A wants to know the time, okay, the current time. So what A will do? I will ask the time to B. Hi, what is the time? A wants to know time, okay. So A will ask to B. Hi, what is the time? And we will reply. What we will reply? The current time. Let's say. 9.30 or maybe 4.15 or 4.51 okay 4.51 or it may be 4.50 whatever the current time we will reply okay so the important thing that you have to understand here both are using a common language and the common language is English That common language is English. Suppose, let's say an another example. Okay, so okay, let's say there is another person C. Okay, and there is one more another person D. Okay, now A wants to ask something to T but C know the language which is English and the D know Japanese only okay C know English only and D know Japanese only D does not understand any other language except Japanese then in this case C cannot communicate directly with D. Okay. Because if C will ask something to D, they will not understand what C is asking. Okay. So the direct communication between C and D is not possible. And let's say D have some information that is very, very important for the C. 
and she wants to know that information then what she will do so she will call any other person the third person who will know both languages english as well as japanese so what she will do here she will she will call any other person e okay let's say e now what will happen so she will ask their question to e instead of asking directly to d okay so she will ask their question to e okay she will ask their question to e and in which language she is asking the question english and now what i will do here i will convert that question in japanese so that they can understand that question okay now they will reply okay they will reply for that question in which language japanese and now what you will do you will convert you will convert the reply of d in english for c so that c can understand okay are you getting my point what is happening there there c is using a third person e and what e is doing here e is working as a translator okay e is working as translator so programming language is a system of notation or we can say a set of rules by which we instruct the computer to do something to perform some task okay as in real world we use a language to communicate with other persons so in similar way to instruct a computer we need a programming language now it is clear what is programming language now the question is why we need to use the programming language why programming language is used it will clear in the next point okay so let's discuss about next point so the next point is history of programming or programming language means how programming evolved how programming languages evolved okay so let's discuss so to understand the history of programming languages to understand the history of programming we have to understand what are the possible ways to instruct the computer okay so let's discuss about it so the first way to instruct the computer is using machine language now what is machine language the combination of zeros and ones binary number system because computer only understand the machine language the binary number system computer does not understand except the machine language so in order to instruct the computer we have to write our instructions in machine language so that computer can understand and follow those instructions which is almost impossible if you don't know what is binary number system and how data represented in binary number system then don't worry we will discuss about it in separate videos but for now just keep in your mind that computer only understand the binary number system and the binary number system use zeros and ones to represent the data okay so writing instructions in machine language for the computer is almost impossible now what are the other ways to instruct the computer so the next way to instruct the computer is using assembly language and programming is started from here assembly language is at top in the hierarchy of programming languages okay so what actually happened in assembly language let me write it down here the zeros and ones of binary number system in machine language replaced with symbols the zeros and ones of binary number system the zeros and ones of machine language replaced with symbols now writing instructions for the computer using assembly language 
was easy for the programmer at that time as compared to the machine language okay it's okay but what actually happened internally let's say this is the set of instructions written in assembly language okay written in assembly language and this is the computer now i have to instruct the computer to execute these instructions written in assembly language but as we know computer only understand zeros and ones except machine language except zeros and ones computer does not understand any other language then how computer will execute the assembly language this is the main point so there is one more program is needed which is which is assembler and what assembler does assembler convert okay assembler translate the instruction written in assembly language into machine language in the combination of zeros and ones and then these instructions are executed by the computer system okay so are you getting my point what is happening there the instructions written in assembly language is first converted into machine language so that computer can understand and then those instructions are executed by the computer system and who is converting the instructions written in assembly language into machine language assembler okay this is task of assembler to translate to convert the instructions written in assembly language into machine language and what is assembler uh, assembler is a special types of program you can say assembler is a system software okay we do not interact with assembler but still writing program in assembly language was difficult for the program at that time now after the assembly language high level languages are developed like fortran c c++ java python etc so after the assembly language the high level languages are developed as you can see here fortran c c++ java python etc these are the high level languages now what is the difference between high level languages and assembly language so in a high level language we write our instructions almost in english so let's say we have written some instruction in c language and what is the c language c language is a high level programming language okay this is the computer so the question is when we written some instruction using high level language it may be anything in your case let's say it may be java it may be python okay it may be c++ here i have taken an example of c language so i have written some instruction in c language and now i wants to execute these instructions but as we know the computer only understand zeros and ones so the how computer will understand these instructions because when we write some instructions in high level language then we write like almost english okay and computer only understand zeros and ones then how computer will execute this instruction how computer will understand these instructions so again there is one more system software or you can say a special program is used for the converting these high level instructions into machine language known as compiler okay and what compiler do compiler convert all these instructions written in high level language into machine language okay and then generate a file and that file contains all these instructions in zeros and ones in the machine language form and then that file is executed by computer system are you getting my point 
when we have written some instructions using high level language and we wants to execute those instructions then the first those instructions will be translated or you can say those instructions will be compiled by compiler of that language so as you can see here we have written a set of instructions there are multiple instructions okay this line is indicating for instructions so there are the multiple instructions written in c language and now i want to execute these instructions so what will happen the compiler of c language because the instructions is written in c language so the compiler of c language will convert these instructions into machine language so that computer can understand those instructions and can execute those instructions because computer only understand the machine language zeros and ones and after the converting these instruction it will generate a file and then that file will be executed by computer okay so this is happening there and i hope now it's cleared why the programming language is needed because to writing instructions or complex instructions as we write in these days using machine language is almost impossible that's why programmer needs a programming language and we have seen here how we instruct the computer using programming languages okay fine now let's move to the next topic so the next topic is about algorithm the question is what is an algorithm let's try to understand an algorithm is well defined computational procedure that takes a value or set of values as input and produce some output the steps taken by an algorithm must be finite in order to solve the problem so an algorithm is something like set of steps that we are going to take to solve a problem okay the algorithm is different from instructions that we write using programming languages algorithm denotes what are the steps that we are going to take in order to solve any problem okay an algorithm is language independent algorithm is not depend on any language now for the better understanding let's try to understand with an example so this is the problem we have to write an algorithm to add two numbers so in order to add two numbers what are the steps that can be taken and that we are going to take we will write in this algorithm now let's write the algorithm for this problem and we will discuss about it later after writing the algorithm for this problem okay so what will happen in the first step let's say this is a step 1 and what will happen in the first step we will start our program execution will start from here from the first step okay now what will happen in the step 2 so as you know we have to add two number then we will ask for the two numbers number 1 number 2 okay now what is the number 1 and number 2 here so these are the variables now what is variable we will discuss about it later in the next video so don't worry just try to understand whatever the number we will adding the first number will come to number 1 and the second number will come to number 2 okay so we have got the two numbers now what we will have to do we will have to add these two numbers and now after adding the number we have to show the result but after adding these numbers we have to store the result somewhere in memory so that we can show it later okay so what will happen in the next step let's say this is the step third now what will happen in this step we will assign one more variable here and this variable will hold will store the result after adding this number okay so
okay now result is another variable and it will store the result after adding these two numbers number one and number two now what will happen in the fourth step so this is the fourth step and now what will happen in this step in this step we will add these numbers and will store in result okay so number one plus number two now we are adding the number one and number two here okay as you can see and we are storing the result in the result variable now what we will do in the fifth step so this is the fifth step now what we will do we have the result after adding the number now we will display the result okay okay so we have displayed the result now what the next step this is the sixth step and we have completed our task we have added the two numbers and we have displayed it okay now we will stop the execution so this is an algorithm to add two numbers okay now anyone can follow these steps in order to add two numbers and they will get the output you can code these steps you can code this algorithm using any programming language it may be java in your case it may be python it may be c plus plus c any programming language you can use and you can implement this algorithm and the problem of adding two numbers will be solved now it's clear what is an algorithm an algorithm is set of steps that we are going to take in order to solve any problem so these are the steps we have taken in order to solve the problem of adding two numbers i would like to tell you guys one more important thing and that is more than one algorithm for the same program can be exist so please don't be confused now let's move to the next point now the next point is about flowchart the question is what is flowchart let's discuss about it so flowchart is a graphical representation of program let me change the color okay so flowchart is a graphical representation of program or algorithm using flowchart we represent the flow of program how it will be executed by the computer it also helps the programmer to write program easily okay now one note is also here that is once we drawn an accurate flowchart it means we have completed the job more than half yes it is true we will discuss about it later in the video how it's true okay now what we do actually in the flowchart so using flowchart we represent a program or an algorithm graphically okay and when we represent our program or flowchart graphically then of course we need some shapes so these are some shapes or you can say symbol that are used generally in flowchart so the oval shape is used for start and stop the parallelogram is used for input and output the rectangle shape is used for process and the diamond shape is used for the decision for the checkings and the circle shape is used as a connector it is used to connect okay now let's try to understand with an example how we represent an algorithm or a program in flowchart okay now the question is simple we have to draw a flowchart to add two numbers this is the uh, previous algorithm as we discussed in this video okay now let's try to draw a flowchart for this algorithm then it will be more clear how we represent our algorithm or program using flowchart okay so what we will do in the first step we will start and which shape is used for the start and stop the oval shape so i will write here start 
okay and which shape will be used oval shape actually i'm using writing pad so please ignore my handwriting okay and try to draw a fresh flowchart on your notebook so we have started now what will happen in the next step we will ask for the number so which shape is used for the input and output parallelogram and here we will asking for the number it means the number will be inputted here okay so parallelogram shape will be choose here so let me write it down here perfect so in the next step we will add these two numbers and will store in some another variable so let me write it down here okay so this is the rectangle and what will happen in this step the number will be added and will be stored in the result okay it means some processing is happening there and now what will happen in the next step so the value of result whatever the value result have will be displayed in the next step and which step is used to represent the output parallelogram so what i'll do first let me change the color and i will write here sorry print result okay and we will use the parallelogram okay now we have completed the task then what will happen in the next step in last step the execution will be stopped and which shape is used to represent the start and stop the oval shape okay now we have represented all the steps of this algorithm graphically but still our flowchart is incomplete one more thing we have to do we have to show the flow of program how it will be executed by the computer what will be the flow of this algorithm to show the flow of the algorithm in flowchart we use arrow so what we'll do we will use an arrow like this okay now it is completed so this is the flowchart for the previous algorithm of adding two numbers okay and this is how you can represent a program or algorithm graphically using flowchart now let's discuss how the flowchart helps the programmer to write code easily so as you can see now anyone can follow this flowchart to write the program for adding two numbers for the actual implementation of this algorithm if you try to write on this flowchart you will get the program will start from here then the program will ask for two numbers then the, this number will be added and will store in another variable then the value of this variable will be displayed and then program will be over here so if you go through this flowchart to write code for this algorithm it will be very easy all the information all the required information is mentioned here so this is how flowchart helps the programmer to write program easily okay i hope you are getting this point and one more important use of flowchart is there the flowchart is also used to note down any idea on the paper let's say you have idea in your mind for any project and you want to show the person next to you or your friend 
or your faculty or your investor how you will implement that idea so what we will do at that time you can represent that idea you can note down that idea on paper using flowchart and then you can show to your investor this is the idea and how it can be implemented you can show to your friend you can show to your faculty okay so flowchart also helps a programmer or a developer or we can say any other person to note down an idea or to represent an idea on the paper okay so i hope you are getting all these things now let's move to the next point so the next question is what is a computer program so a computer program is a procedure set of instructions expressed in any programming language known as program or computer program okay so let's try to understand in simple way when the all steps of an algorithm is expressed using any programming languages then it is known as computer programs or program let's take an example of previous algorithm so let me copy it so i have copied okay now as you can see this is the previous algorithm of adding two numbers so when these all steps will be expressed in any programming language when all these steps will be written using any programming language then it will known as computer program okay it's simple so what is a computer program a computer program is a procedure or a set of instructions it can be multiple instructions in a computer program okay expressed in a programming language then it will known as computer program okay it's simple and we will discuss about it later in the next video when we will write the first program okay so don't worry about it and if you have any query if you have any question related to this video the topics we have discussed in this video then please let me know in the comment section if you are watching my video first time then please subscribe the channel and share this video for now bye bye take